welcome to Music Therapy. I'm Jessica Risker. I am a Chicago musician and also a licensed clinical professional counselor. I um, was actually just on a Zoom call with a family friend who are uh, having a baby shower. They're adopting a baby and they were just talking through the process about how they went through the adoption process and how that's all playing out. And so that's very much on my mind. It was really touching to hear about that. Um, but getting back to the show, so I'm kind of transitioning back to show mode. So music therapy is a show where I use my experience as a counselor to address issues that are facing musicians and other creatives um, during these weird times. And some of that involves informational videos and other times it involves interviews like today. I'm going to be doing an interview with Shelby Turner who will be joining us in just a second. Um, if you want to look at some past interviews and past shows, they're on YouTube. They used to live in my uh, story, but now Instagram changed it to be in the IGTV um, tab. I'm trying to see if she'll be Yeah, he's here. Okay. Um, so, I don't know what Instagram's trying to pull, but they're up there. It'll be up there, but they're definitely going to be on YouTube. Um, I'm really excited to talk to Shelby. I'll give a quick... I should have made a list because I think he's got many, many things that... Uh, you know, are great to share about him, but in addition to being a good friend, he's also a really talented songwriter and performer. Um, he's, you know, created communities and been part of communities all over the, the country. Um, he's also an instrumental part of the Chicago mu music scene. And, uh, sorry, David just said, uh-oh, because uh, Huck just started crying. Um, he's gotta get up. So. Um, he's also an instrumental part of the DIY scene here in Chicago, and a lot of cities have DIY, sheen, DIY scenes, but I think what makes Chicago's particularly special is there's a certain sort of uh, magic that you know comes from some of the spaces, and Shelby and his partner Katie are a huge part of what makes it particularly special here, I think. Um, and and so much more, but we're going to talk to Shelby. So let's see, tomorrow I've got Sasha Mullen coming on. Next weekend I've got some great guests lining up. I'm still filling in the dates, but I'll keep you guys posted on that. Let me connect with Shelby. Let's see. Oops. There we go. Okay, we're connecting. Thank you guys for joining us. Hi, Carrie. Connect with Shelby. Hi, Shelby. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I'm going to turn up my volume. Can you hear me? Yes. How are you? Um, I'm pretty good. I'm really nervous. Don't be nervous. We'll, we'll get through it together. We can totally delete this if you don't like it. No one will ever know about it again. We can convince the people that watched it that they never saw it. I have Avis in the background. To... Oh, yeah. I almost... I do want to ask you if you'll scoot over a little because right now all the comments are right on your face. That's better. Okay, well, if you have questions for Shelby, please uh, please type them in. But, um, but yeah, thank you for coming <laughs> on. Um, and you can explain some things too if we don't understand. Um, so you're doing okay today? A little nervous? Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> go ahead. Katie was giving me a pep talk. I, uh, <laughs> and I talked to you about this too, but I am not really used to like being interviewed like as myself, like honestly. I'm, I'm normally like pretending to be somebody else. So it's kind of a, a, a outside of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Like personally, to be like vulnerable in this way in public. Well, thanks for doing it. If if anything goes too far, just use a code word. Somehow I'll know what you mean. You can throw a <laughs> word in there, and we'll. we'll I'll we'll... probably. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. Okay. It'll be fine. Well, let's. Uh, so I'm going to start out the same way that I've started out all the interviews, which is basically to get a contrast if there is a contrast between what your life looked like. Can you hear Huck yelling in the background? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so to get a contrast of what your life looked like before quarantine versus after, if there is a contrast. So the quarantine in Illinois started March 21st. So what, what would a typical week look like for you, you know, before that? Um, I work as a 
teacher's aid at a Catholic school. So I uh, work like nine to five, nine to six ish every day. And I am also in grad school at DePaul to get a master's in elementary education. Uh, so I've been pretty busy with those things like for the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. And um, I live with my partner Katie and our friend Brian in a house called Big Forever that has shows like sometimes. And we play, we play music here. Uh, Brian and I are in a band. Hi, Brian. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we play in our band. But it's like we would do like one show here a month. Our band might play like one show a month. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and then you, are you taking some other classes too, in addition to the DePaul ones? Yeah, um, so to be certified as an elementary school teacher, you need to have a certain amount of like prerequisites. And because I went to like a liberal arts school, I didn't take any gen ed classes. So I've had to um, enroll at city colleges and take some classes online. Like um, I just, I just finished biology. So biology was my last one and then I was going to take an equivalency test for uh, macroeconomics but uh, now all the testing centers are closed so that's kind of TBD but um, yeah in theory I'm supposed to be student teaching in the fall and I'll be certified after that but it's kind of up in there a little bit. Okay so what was your favorite of your of your general ed classes? Um, well <laughs> Uh, last summer, I took history, and I decided to, U.S. history, sorry, and I decided to um, read Howard Zinn, uh, People's History of the United States, like, while I was doing the, doing the coursework, so I had never read that before, and that was really cool and mind-blowing, but I also like my science classes, because they had, like, lab kits. You had to buy lab kits, so you do, like, the labs at home and follow the instructions, which was fun. I got to do I have a picture stuff. of you in the basement with a coat on, just getting crazy with it. <laughs> Katie, Katie took some pictures, if you really want to see, I can call them so, up. So you, you know, have been very busy. So what, how do those look different now that we're in quarantine, like both work and uh, your classes? Um, college is online now and is is whatever um and like it's not it's not that good and it's not that bad um but we're just trying to get through it and um my school is has gone to remote learning like every school but um my job as a teacher's aide has been kind of hands off so there ha there hasn't been that much that I've been asked to do so I've had I'm still being paid which I'm very fortunate for and um I uh, have a lot of free time. Um, how has this all felt for you? Uh, it's it's been pretty good for me. I've been I've been on like a journey of self discovery, and I'm in like a very fortunate situation not only with my job but my housing situation and um, my relationship um, with my partner Katie. We, we don't have a screaming child. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's nice. Uh, yeah, things 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 are nice for us. So um, I've been trying to like refine my uh, self care routine, I guess, and um, be creative and be like mentally healthy. What are you doing for self care? Um, I mean, I. We are eating well, like, and keeping things clean and tidy, which um, are not things that I would normally prioritize, but like, uh, it, it kind of makes a world of difference mm -hmm. for um, just like waking up and feeling like you want to like do something, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I can walk into the kitchen and, like, there aren't dishes stacked everywhere because we've been, like, doing our dishes and stuff. Like, so 
just having like keeping keeping the space well like keeps the self well kind of mm -hmm. uh but I, ha I haven't been exercising as much as uh anyone i've talked to <laughs> but um i feel fine about that um and yeah i'm just i'm trying to like not uh like piss my time away and i'm trying to like uh do things that um i find fulfilling i've been i've been trying to like dedicate more time to writing songs and working on music so what is that looking like what have you been working on um, well, you, I know you've mentioned this on music therapy before, but, um, song, songwriting club, like we, Jessica and I, to the viewers are both a part of a songwriting club, which meets now every other week, uh, we've been meeting on zoom and, um, that has been like a really nice way to like have a goal of something to work towards to be finished every two weeks. And also it's been like a nice sense of community kind of to like get together with people um and I, a lot of the zoom conversations are like so like how's quarantine for you like oh yeah it's weird. oh yeah i went to the grocery store it's crazy um but for for a songwriting club it's kind of cool to like escape escape reality a little bit and just kind of focus on talking about our songs and listening really closely to each other's songs it's like it's an amazing experience for me to like just to be able to go into this world of like talking talking and listening to music very closely and like kind of sharing it's like a sacred place for me that i get to share it's like a, almost like a church or something it's very restorative and um yeah i'm i'm really thankful for that uh so that i think I think I've really like leaned into that and um, have any, anyone, anyone that like thinks that they would benefit from that. I, I would love if like more people would come. Not that like it would be better with more people, but just like, I was thinking like, if it could like bring like a fraction of the joy that it brings into my life to somebody mm -hmm. else's life, like, please like, you know, come, come forth. I um, think, I mean, yeah, for me, it's definitely given some meaning to this time where, I mean, I have my own pace when I work on music and stuff, but now that I have more space, but things are kind of stressful, it's it's been nice to not only see people, but to have this ongoing thing where I feel like I'm, I, I don't know, using the time and like you said, kind of connecting with people. It's also just kind of nice socially. Um, but I know we were first going to do it before all this started. We had kind of said we were going to go back to once a month, but I'm glad we've ramped it up to every two weeks. It's kept, it's kept it flowing. Do you feel like your songs, I mean, I know your songs cause I've, I've heard them that you've been making, but do you feel like, are they connected with each other at all? Are they connected with this experience? The ones that you've been working on recently? Um, uh, yeah, I should say, I don't know if I told you this, um, but I, Last Sunday, I'd, I was like, I'm just gonna start writing a song every day, because if I if 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 there's a day where I wrote a song, then like I feel so good that day, and I also I feel the same way about watching like a really good horror movie. So I was like, if possible, I'm gonna try to write a song every day and watch a horror movie every day. Um, but I have I have written seven in a row now, so I'm kind of I have a little hot I have a little fire streak. Mm -hmm. um and um sometimes when you're like forcing yourself to write a song and you pick up the guitar or whatever you end up just like singing about the first thing that comes to mind so like some of them have been a little like quarantine themed I guess but um I'm also just reflecting on like my relationships and like the world as I know it and you know, thinking about myself, like thinking about like being a better, being a better man. Um, but like I was saying to, <laughs> I was messaging with my friend earlier um, and uh, I wrote a song this week that is about chess and it sounds like Devo. Um, 
So I think that's the other cool thing about like kind of forcing yourself to just write a song is like sometimes you some you something just comes out of left field like I never would have like written this song if I hadn't have like forced myself to write a song today, you know? Yeah. When you're I'm trying to think of how to say this concisely. So I mean, feel like your songs feel very like melody led. Like I can just hear you kind of sing, I don't know, singing something and the words coming out and then you kind of put the music and chords to it underneath it. I don't know if that's how you actually write, but it feels to me like it could be. How do you, how does a song come together for you? Um, sometimes I have an idea of what I want the song to be about. And like um, uh, I, a couple of songwriting clubs ago, I wrote a song called um, the sun sets on phone land, which was like a very like narrative song about like life in a punk house kind of. Uh, and that I pretty much like wrote the whole song without ever picking up the guitar, mm -hmm. you know, I like wrote all the words first, but then other times if I don't have a strong idea of like what I want, if I don't have a strong narrative idea or like thematic idea, then like I will just pick up a guitar and like come up with a riff or whatever. Um, and then in the past few years, I've been like using, using technology a little bit. We're all like, I, I record music with logic, logic pro and I'll just, I'll like come up with like a little musical thing on the guitar or keyboard and just like loop it or like come up with a drum thing first. So it's, I think like, um, changing, changing like the, uh, method kind of changes the result, obviously. Mm -hmm. which I find kind of exciting, you know? So when you wrote the Foamland song and you had the words, did they have a melody to them or did you then put a melody to the words? Um, it's kind of, it's funny. It's like, it's like when you have a dream and you're like, where did this dream come from? Or what does it mean? You know, like sometimes the song just like starts to form itself in your head. And like, I think a lot of times it's like kind of mashed up versions of, songs that are already in your head and like sometimes i'll think of like a stanza of like a song that i like and just like mm -hmm. kind of base the the meter on a song that i know already um but i was talking to my friend um uh -oh, i don't want to give up too much uh, personal information here anyway uh something that she said just kind of made me think of one of the lines from the song and then i um I just kind of vibe. I don't know. Okay. Um, you know, speaking of, of punk houses, and then I, I introduced you by kind of talking about the DIY scene and your role that you've had in the Chicago scene. Um, how has it been for you? I mean, I feel like you've made some changes in your life and the things like going, going to school and with working and everything over the time that I've known you and, um, you know, that's also, you've, you've kind of been in different places, but always kind of tried to create a space for people to perform and perform yourself. And um, over time, it feels like, you know, that was something that was, you had more room to give to that. Whereas lately, it feels like you're really busy and you're still doing that in the house, but not as much. How is that? How does that feel for you? Um, it feels, it's the my feelings are extremely like complicated about it. You know, like I, I never imagined myself like making a decision. Like I don't want to um, host shows for people anymore. I don't want to play shows anymore. I don't want to go on tour anymore. I never like, like 10 years ago, like I never would have believed like that that thought would cross my mind. But you know, life is just kind of funny that way. Like, I started working a job, like, working with kids and, like, working a job that isn't, like, w isn't what I feel like a dead-end job, like, jobs I've always had working in kitchens and stuff. Like, uh, I felt this sense of, like, fulfillment and, and like, satisfaction and, like, self-esteem almost. Like, I'm doing something that matters, like, mm -hmm. like, outside of, like, whatever, host shows, like, because I'm on any given day, I could like talk myself out of thinking that like that is an important thing to do. Like art is a, 
like that any type of art is like a noble way for me to spend my time you know like I think like a lot of creative people like you just can't you can't always like convince yourself that it's worth your time but um working with kids I just feel like was totally different where I just wanted to um I felt like every every moment that I spent helping kids is like a moment a moment well spent and um so I just I really wanted to like get more into that as a career kind of Mm -hmm. um and then I started getting like a regular paycheck and benefits and stuff and Mm -hmm. I I never knew what I was missing in terms of like the kind of mental stability and like security that like a regular paycheck and like benefits would give me uh and obviously like no judgment to people who who don't want to have a regular job but like I I think I really took for granted like the those kind of creature comforts I guess uh, but so getting a job changed life and um being in a more serious relationship also like it I don't know it's like I feel like every every decision I make to like go out or you know, spend my night at a, at a show or at the empty bottle or like, you know, gallivanting, um, is a night that I'm away from my partner and our relationship. And like, there are some weeks, you know, in, in an alternate universe where like people still go to shows and stuff, but like, there are some weeks where like, we never see each other, you know? And like, I think you, you can identify with this too, because your partner is, uh, is an entertainer um but you know it's hard it's it's like if i can make a choice to either like go out it's like to make a choice to go out will like diminish what i have at home and like staying at home will like kind of build it and nurture it and support it so like i think i think it was like a paradigm shift for me where like like building building my home kind of life became like more of a priority for me so that meant that like I had to um focus less on um kind of music music scene like networking things but um it's it's a conflict like I said because it's always been like a big part of like my identity I guess Mm -hmm. and like even go ahead sorry Like, as you introduced me, you talk about, like, how important, like, I am to the Chicago music scene or, like, my house shows or my community or whatever. Like, you know, like, it's, like, a part of my thing that I do in the world, you know? Mm -hmm. So, like, it's hard to just walk away from that, you know? Because, like, if I stopped doing all that today and you know really I'm not doing it right now but in theory like if I never played or set up a show again like how would I be remembered you know hmm okay there's there's a few entry points I want to go into for for one one I mean one comment I guess I have is that from the outside it also looks like you and Katie your partner that you guys do a lot of that together at Pinky Square it felt like you know this was something that both of you created this space and, and the people who would live with you as well that you guys were always kind of the rock of it, um, that it felt like a shared part of your relationship that you would. Okay, yeah. that's my observation. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it is, it's, it has, it has a place in her life too, but it's her relationship to hosting shows is, it, it means something else to her, I think. So we've kind of negotiated that too. Well, the other thing is that your life, I mean, it seems like, you kind of made these these changes and these adjustments based on your relationship and these experiences you've had at work, but it also feels like you just probably don't have as much time even before the pandemic started because you have been really busy with school and now nobody could even come to anything anyway for the moment. Um, yeah. So I don't know. So I guess I'm I'm curious to see, you know, what that could develop into over time when there's a time where we can all see each other again and what that might look like that feels like it's in better balance for you and you guys yeah 
Yeah, I mean, I think um, it's hopefully it's like never, never static in any of our lives. Like it's like something that we're constantly communicating with ourselves and people we care about where like how how much how much energy and time do I do I want to dedicate to this like today or this week you know mm-hmm. like if like like sometimes in my life like oh like I'm booking a tour and working at the same time like I I get so overwhelmed and stressed out you know like having to like do balance all these things like it, it has never seemed like very like healthy or sustainable to me and I think like finally like acknowledging that like was just a big step in the right direction so I think over the past few years since I started to like really feel myself like burning out on touring at least um and also like I think um a lot of the commerce related parts about like being a musician like all like things that like tie more heavily into like capitalism and like buying and selling and marketing you know like Mm -hmm. those are things that like do not bring me joy Mm -hmm. and so as I'm trying to like make this more sustainable I try to just like negotiate like what is worth my time and what isn't and obviously it will be like less time than I spent before but I think hosting shows at my house or wherever is still like something that like is very fulfilling to me even though there is like a promotional kind of aspect to it like I think like sharing the space is like very like it feels really good to me and I don't I don't have any like plans to like stop doing that that's uh, that's nice to hear I I remember uh, I don't know if you remember this but um several years ago you had said to me that one of the most important things that you like to do is give other people an opportunity so like giving them a space to come play their show or come through town or just, you know, you've always been very open to whoever wanted to get up there and and do their thing. And um, yeah, I think that's really appreciated by a lot of people. Uh, Yeah, I mean, that, that is true. I feel like I, I think it feels good. It feels good to give somebody else something that like will improve their life in a way, you know? And like when you have like, in a way like having a show house is like it's a form of like social and cultural capital kind of mm-hmm. where like I'm I have something I have access to something and I have a kind of dominion over something that like other people don't have so mm-hmm. like I, I can I can share this with them at no cost to me you know I can I can let people on stage um, or whatever and like that's anyone that has like a space is kind of like a gatekeeper of like um culture in a way um but i think the more i thought about that the the harder kind of it became to think about like oh like most of the musicians that play at my spaces are white you know Mm -hmm. like how how to like create a space that is like I don't know, inclusive or equitable, but also like, I don't know. I just feel like I, there are, I came up with a lot of questions, but not a lot of answers. So I think like a few years ago when we talked about this, I might have like, yeah, I think it, I think, I think it's all very complicated. It's all very complicated. Yeah. Yeah. I, Okay, so this this brings me back to another thing I wanted to go back to. You're talking about like giving people an opportunity and then the meaning that you find in being, you know, working in a school, working with kids, and then that you have questions or may not feel exactly the same way about creating art. I can't remember exactly what you said, but, you know, there was something about school that felt like it clicked more for you, that this feels meaningful to me in a way that making art didn't always necessarily. And I guess I wanted to ask you, like, if you could talk about that a little bit. Um, Well, I mean, I think maybe you and maybe people that are watching can identify with this. And like, it's funny. 
it's funny like yeah like every everyone gets down on themselves about their own art i think like and like if if they don't at all then like they are on another level that i don't understand at all like you know but like for example like you log into your bandcamp page and you look at the streams of your music or something and you see like okay like over the past month, like four people have listened to one of my songs all the way through, and like eight people have skipped, you know, and like something that I worked so hard on that I like put my heart into that I that I sequenced this, this, this entire thing. Like, no one, according to the bank statistics, has like listened all the way through, and like that is a small example of like, how humbling it can be to like create something and put it out into the world like especially music that music is like an interactive art form it doesn't just like sit there and look good like without a listener engaging with it like it just doesn't exist you know it's like the like the tree falling in the forest you know like we're literally talking about the sound that it makes you know so like um i think i think it's hard to to not always have people like listening to what you're doing or like it to to and feel like people don't care about what you're doing um and i think i think there are a lot of times when i like really think about that i think like oh like making music is like not worthwhile because like i work so hard on it and like no one cares like basically you know melodramatic but like that's like a feeling that crosses my mind sometimes but like when I walk into the school, even like when I wake up in a horrible mood and I write and I walk in, like it all, all just kind of melts away, you know, like it's, it's not about me. Like the kids don't really care. Like they know I'm in a band, but like they don't really care if the band is good or not. Like it doesn't really mm -hmm. matter to anybody there, you know, which like is really kind of freeing for me I, like, I feel like I could just like let go of it a bit and focus on um, just like talk, talking to the kids about us and working with them on things that they need help with and you know like phonics like just focusing on phonics you know like and I can escape like my own ego and like my, the the kind of I don't know it's like it's really painful to like make art you know like to put yourself out there like really it really hurts like it's so heartbreaking a lot of the time you know so i think like finding a balance of things that like are not heartbreaking like makes it more sustainable you know what if any meaning or pleasure do you get out of the process of making it okay can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Did you get a phone call? I didn't get anything. Did you get a text or a phone call or something? No, the internet has been really sketchy here, though. It just kind of blacks out sometimes. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, it's, like I was saying, it's Instagram's fault. So we were in the middle of uh, talking about, you know, sort of the product versus the process and if there's any meaning or, or joy or pain uh, in the, the process of, you know, making a song or making something for you? Um, yeah, yeah, like, I don't know if, if it um, froze before I said this, but I, I feel like um, cr creating a song for me is, like, the best part, like, where I get to kind of create my own little universe. Like, you get to, like, the ma you're the creator, you're the master of this universe in this song. And you can make the rules, you know, you can like, you can choose, you can choose everything. You can like choose the instruments, choose the time signature. You can pick what it's going to be about. You can change the voice that you sing in, you know, like, and I feel like it gives me such a high to like create a song. And like, especially like when I, when I finish a song, like I get like, a feeling like nothing else kind of mm -hmm. like which is why I've been doing it every day where it's just like yeah 
why not? Like, and it's like, because I'm doing it for myself, pretty much just to get that feeling. Like, and like, also like the more songs you write, like, okay, like, I don't really care if anyone hears these songs. Like, yeah, it, I'm do I'm like literally doing it just to like make myself feel better. Do you? Do you always feel happy with your end product? Product. Um, I'm happy like uh, finishing a song no matter what. And if if the song is good, like, and my my criteria for this is like an hour or two after I like, finish writing the song, if I can mm -hmm. remember how the song goes, then I'm kind of like, oh, like the song is still with me, kind of like, wow. Uh -huh. Then I feel like, oh, like. I did something really good, or I did something special with, with this one. Um, but yeah, it's like, it's funny, like, talking to people and trying to convince them to join songwriting club and stuff. People are like, oh, like, I'm having a hard time writing songs, or I'm not inspired lately. It's just like, I feel like the more songs you write, the easier it gets, kind of. It's like every time you write a song, you get like a little better at like the practice, you know? It's like practice, like the more you do it, like the, the easier it becomes, so. When I was, I was just telling this, uh, I did a podcast with Anna Holmquist uh, yesterday and I was just saying. Oh, was that the bad songwriter? Yeah, bad songwriter. And I was saying that when I was in college and I wanted to write songs, but I really wasn't doing it yet. Cause I was, I, it was just very daunting. A friend of mine had said, I'd asked him if it gets easier with time, and he said, he doesn't think it gets easier, but it becomes more possible. I feel like that's my, my experience. Do you feel like you're in, well, I'll let you comment. <laughs> it looked like you were going to say something. I think it gets easier, but I don't know. You think it gets, okay, well, <laughs> well, let me ask you this. I mean, for me, it's often a slog, and it, I think it has gotten easier with time, actually, but... Um, it's often very hard and frustrating. I mean, do you feel in control of the process? Do you feel like you're doing what you want to do when you're working on a song and it's going the way you want it to go? Uh, I was talking to my friend John about this the other day. Like, if you, if I'm like try to, trying to write songs for a new Richard album record and like, especially like imagining some alternate universe where like I was on a label or something and like, they were like, all right, we'll put, we'll put this out on LP if it's really, really good. Then mm -hmm. I feel like it would be a lot harder for me to like be free to come up with a song because I would I would be I would be censoring myself like even before I started writing the song I'd be like judging yeah. what the song was but like to not have any objective is I feel like to to pick up a guitar and be like I I will write the stupidest song ever right now mm -hmm. like you know I think it just comes out sometimes and sometimes kind of it's good. It's not. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, kind of a theme of this conversation also just feels like liberation. Whether you kind of like, you know, finding things that give you more meaning and how that frees you for maybe other pursuits and maybe writing a song without thinking of an intended audience frees you up to just kind of do whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, every everyone probably has their own version of like this kind of liberation where like people are. Hopefully, hopefully this is giving people like an opportunity to like explore those things in their own life and like kind of tap into like ways to be happier. Sorry, that's kind of frustrating. Um, I'm sorry. Let's, let's see if I can get it through the question. I guess it's kind of long winded. So I was, you know, when I think about the stuff that I make, sometimes I think that part of making something and putting it out there is that you, you know, there's a sort of, this is a piece of me and the piece of me wants to be like affirmed or remembered or even maybe like in a way that kind of extends my identity and helps me feel like I'm kind of living through that for other people. And if that's not um, being experienced, then you know, that can be sort of, I, I guess I'm not going to get too far into analyzing all of that, but then, so I think there's a lot of meaning attached to uh, personal meaning and a sense of self attached to the things that we create and why it's important. It feels like that people, um, 
people consume them, for lack of a better word. But you also have this body of stuff that you make that will blow me away. It'll be like something that'll be better than I'll see at like a Chicago theater or something like that, like a play that you'll do. And it just, for real, it just exists in this like one, one space, this one moment in time. And I, I guess I just want to ask you about how you think about those, those creations. Uh, um, but theoretically, like, can you hear me? I can hear you. You were kind of breaking up, and I can. Okay, I'm on my phone now instead of the iPad. Okay. Okay, so a whole another set of problems. <laughs> but <laughs> so, um, like, if I made a play and wanted it produced in a Chicago theater, like, it would, to me, it would be like this impossible like series of hoops I would need to jump through, including like I was talking about earlier, like promoting it, like begging people to come. Yeah. And I think like for something that happens once, like it's like trying to like cut as much of the like difficult parts <laughs> about like putting on a show out of it. That being like the marketing part of it? Marketing and like really preparing for it like not like the when my friends and I do like a winter pageant mm -hmm. um, people who are watching have seen but we um generally don't rehearse prepare for it very much but like I think the magic is really just like the the experience of like everyone being in the room together and I think like I think the fact that it only happens once and it's full of like little mistakes and um, special like breaking the fourth wall moments mm -hmm. like I think it makes it more special you know like where whereas if we had like done something and rehearsed it a lot like it would be less exciting in a way and like le definitely less like punk rock mm -hmm. where like it would it would be harder to imagine like happening in like somebody's loft or whatever you know yeah but I I think yeah I went I went to I studied like performance art in college and stuff so I think I really like kind of became a believer in that like live live art mm -hmm. like the the magic of like something that is live kind of like and which like really like is what makes what makes theater interesting like theater has like changed a lot and like has like I'm not like an expert on theater by any means but like you know, it's it's really like suffered kind of in some ways since like T V and movies like became easier ways mm -hmm. in entertainment. But there's something that like theater provides that like none of those things could ever could ever even like emulate where like theater is like actually real, you know? Is what? It's actually real, you know, it's like there are actually people front of you like one of them could like fall down it could be a total disaster like and like that is what's exciting and that's why it's cool to like go see like people like acrobats like tightrope walkers or and like even like dancers like dancers are constantly like somehow not like falling down and hurting themselves like it's this amazing like balance of like um kind of like magic and peril you know where like they anything could happen in front of you as you're watching and um also like it could be like the most amazing thing that you ever see um and i think like yeah like a recording of one of our songs could never be that you know? yeah because it's it's done it's like it's dead in a way like it's not alive anymore um, and like really the the live part of it is the meaning that the listener makes when they engage with the recording but like that's out of your hands you know mm -hmm. but like with with live performance and like even I've always tried to like keep this in mind like with events we do and um, with my bands if possible if I feel like it's sustainable and healthy to like put energy into this which sometimes it is really exhausting but like if you if you go see a rock band and they do something like unexpected that you never thought a rock band would do like it just i don't know i just feel like it something something happens that like 
I can't really describe and like maybe I don't need to, but like it's something something there's like a blip in the universe that like becomes alive for a time or like is like if you're there like you know like it's important and it feels important. And like I think the fact it only happens once or in this small kind of like Makes it, makes it more magical, you know. Uh, but I think that I've always felt like if you get up on stage in front of people, like theoretically, like if you, if people are watching you, like you could really do whatever you want, you know. Mm -hmm. I could I could book a show and be like, okay, I'm Shelby Turner. I'm gonna come play my guitar and sing. But like I could really, once I'm once people are watching me, I could put the guitar down. I could like take my shoes off, I could like, you know, start like doing push-ups. Like it's, it's really like the possibilities are like unlimited and like, I, I, I try to like always, I try to always like, keep that in mind, I guess. Thanks. I just also want to add that like, I think like things that I do, like, maybe are kind of done like the, i did a performance at my house recently where like i would like put in front of people and like rap about it and like this is kind of dumb it wasn't like a very deep thing but like maybe like someone would like my friend joseph was there and was like oh there were some people that were kind of younger and like have maybe never seen someone like cook an egg in their own kitchen as part of a, perform a performance before uh -huh. and maybe somebody will like get an idea from that like something dumb that like me or my friends do will go on and do, oh, like I never imagined doing it but, but I actually have a good idea now I'm gonna do it and like I just I think it's like a sacred it's kind of like a sacred thing to share and it's like a sacred space for me like but like to be in a room with other people and to uh to perform and to like share kind of that so like I I hope it's always a part of um, my life and I hope it's always a part of like our culture I guess our society like I hope I hope <laughs> I hope this pandemic doesn't um kill that you know desire for people to be together and share like that kind of magic you know uh yeah I I I don't think so I think that's what we're all missing um circling back then um this is thank you first of all because this has been a really nice conversation it's been really great to hear your thoughts on this stuff. I could probably like ask you a whole bunch more, but um, I'll just close with, you know, what, because the show has a particular focus on like mental health awareness and um, people's experiences during all this, is there anything that you can share with people that's been working for you to get through this time that you do? Um, I mean, I, yeah, I I mentioned this earlier. Every day, some days are some days are harder than others, you know. And I think I think like constantly like having this conversation with yourself, where you're asking, you're investigating how to feel and like where your feelings come from. Like for me, like I really just feel like, you're breaking up a little bit. Yeah, I can hear this little like sound. How does it sound now? better okay yeah so constantly having like a conversation with yourself i hear it again uh <laughs> but um like for me like food you know mm -hmm. like if i'm if i haven't eaten or if i have a healthy meal like i start to kind of run off you know i start to lose it <laughs> you're fading away uh <laughs> if I, and I start to lose it. but that's just one example okay um, and I think like, yeah, never, never, you know, never give up on like having that conversation because some days it feels like you stop working on it. But I think like there, there, there are lots and control that will make us, will maybe won't make us happy, but will keep like pull us out of the, um, out of the doldrums, you know? Yeah. Okay.
Well, thank you. I think I think the universe is saying wrap yep. it up. Uh, but thanks a lot for being on the show. And I miss you and hope to see you see you in person soon. Yeah, let's make a plan. Thanks for inviting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Bye, Shelby. Bye. Okay, that was Shelby. Uh, Shelby Turner of Richard Album. It was a really great conversation, despite some technical difficulties through no fault of our own. Um, and, you know, if you missed it, I'm going to be putting it on YouTube. I think it's going to live on the IGTV. I don't know. Instagram has been mixing it up a little bit lately, so but it'll be there. I really recommend it. Um, just hearing about how Shelby's relationship with his music has changed as he sort of moved through his life and where he finds meaning and all that was, um, was really interesting to hear about and makes me contemplate things too. So I'm going to close out as I do every music therapy show with this song. And let's see. Okay. It's called Cut My Hair. Yeah.
Okay, thank you for sticking around and listening. Hi, hi everybody. Um, <clears throat> just reading the comments. Um, that was Cut My Hair, that's on my album. I see you among the stars, but you can get it Western Vinyl. And I forgot to ask Shelby because I was so enchanted by our conversation where you can find his music, but I know he's got a band camp with Richard Alvin. I know he's got music on Spotify. Um, so go check that out. Also want to wish a very special happy birthday to Schlitz Sheboygan. It's his birthday today. Um, I miss you guys. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow with Sasha Mullen. I'm going to talk some more. Next weekend I've got some really good guests lining up. Once I have the dates, I will, I will uh, let you know who they are and when they're going to be on. But uh, stay tuned. Thanks for watching Music Therapy. Hope you guys are doing okay. Miss you and see you soon.